you've got a role in the F-35, the Joint Strike Fighter. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that's probably the last manned fighter that we'll ever build. Does that have implications for United Technologies? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. I think you know, there's not consensus within the Air Force today, I don't believe, in terms of will there be a next generation of manned aircraft. This is a, a fifth generation fighter. JSF, the, the engine is a Pratt & Whitney F-135. It's, it's an amazing technical feat, 43,000 pounds of thrust, um, and it's a single engine fighter, so it's got to be prime reliable. It means it can never fail. Um, as you think about it, the next generation, though, is probably going to be fought a little differently, and it'll be unmanned vehicles. Now, we have a presence in unmanned vehicles. Uh, we have engines on several different platforms, but I think uh, clearly this will be the last big procurement that uh, this generation will see of, of fighters as we replace the aging F-16s, F-15s, F-14s that are out there. Let's think about the other side of the company, aviation. The big picture outlook is surprisingly strong, it sounds like. It's very strong. I think, again, just big picture here, there's about 22,000 commercial aircraft in service today around the world, about 5,000 here in the U.S., 17,000 outside the U.S. Boeing and Airbus both believe that in the next 20 years there will need to be 30,000 new aircraft. So half of the fleet today of that 22,000 will retire in 20 years, but you're going to add 30,000, meaning by the end of uh, the next two decades, you're going to have something like 40,000 aircraft in service, so double what you have today. Commercial traffic, revenue passenger miles, the way we look at it, typically increase about 5% a year. They've done that since 1960, with only two exceptions during the last 60 years. United Technologies has a lot of stuff going on in commercial buildings. It has a lot of stuff going on in commercial airplanes also. Uh, the engines, the Pratt & Whitney engines, most people are familiar with, but you've got much more than that, right? Certainly do. We've got a, a, an aerospace systems group. Again, this is a, the combination of our Hamilton Sunstream business, which we put together back in 1999, and the Goodrich Corporation. Those businesses together are about $14.5 billion in revenue next year. Uh, very, very profitable. And they supply everything from the uh, the slides that uh, deploy on an emergency landing to the electric power generation to auxiliary power. Uh, we'll do galleys. Uh, we'll do uh, air conditioning for aircraft. Almost every system on an aircraft will be covered by our aerospace systems group with the exception of the avionics in the very front of the plane. Just as there's an opportunity in buildings to combine all these pieces, is there an opportunity in the airplane to combine all those pieces and gain efficiencies? You know, that was the premise when, when United Technologies bought Sunstream Corporation back in 1999. The idea was to combine Hamilton's business, which was a legacy business, and they did everything from propellers to air conditioning systems with the Sunstream business. When the 787 airplane came along, we were actually able to take nine systems, put them together, and take out a tremendous amount of cost and weight in the aircraft.